So good morning, uh, James, and I'm happy to share with you our uh, technique of uh, close reduction for severely displaced radial neck fractures. And uh, we could publish this uh, in Indian Journal of Orthopedics in 2020. And since then, I have been receiving a lot of uh, feedbacks from people who have tried uh, this technique for very severely displaced radial neck fracture. I'll take you through. Uh, the question is, what can be offered to this eight years old uh, girl with completely toppled off radial neck fracture? And before four or five years, we used to consider either a joystick uh, assisted reduction or uh, Metizu technique to reduce it. And at times, if we fail, we would keep the preparations to do open reduction. And we all know that uh, open reduction has its own demerits of uh, stiffness and at times avascular necrosis. And uh, by trying to do a joystick, this uh, joystick wire can iatrogenically uh, hamper the blood supply of the radial head. So we tried uh, <clears throat> a new technique. Now we know that the radial neck fractures uh, were classified by Jude based on uh, the angulation and translation. While Jude 1 is an undisplaced or horizontal shift, Jude 2 is uh, angulation less than 30 degrees. Jude 3 is angulation between 30 and 60 degrees. And Jude 4 are the ones which with more than 60 degrees of angulation. Again, further it were divided into 4A and 4B. While 4B is the most severe and toppled in the radial head which lies on the side of the metaphysis. Conventionally, we tend to treat them, uh, the type 1s and 2s, uh, conservatively. We, we know that there are some papers shows that when angulation is less than 30 degrees, it remodels completely as time elapses, and so you don't need to treat them. Uh, between 30 and 60 degrees, close reduction techniques have been employed by giving uh, uh, direct pressure or ash mark bandage application and so on. But when it comes to uh, 4A and 4B uh, in the literature, uh, unanimously it has been described, you either do a percutaneous or an open reduction. And it is not amenable to close reduction. So uh, our, based on our experience, our uh, motive was to uh, see whether our technique works here. And we found that uh, we could perform this in severely displaced uh, neck fracture. The rationale of anatomic reduction, uh, although it has been said that more than 30 degrees, uh, less than 30 degrees angulation is acceptable, uh, but this paper from John Wedge in JBJS shows that any translocation of radial head, it makes, an, uh, induces an CAM effect and limits the rotation. So they suggested that the uh, translations should be corrected as uh, normal as possible. Now we know that there are many techniques, uh, reduction techniques has been described right from the Peterson maneuver to the Israeli technique and Nehar Torch and uh, Huntley's method. So we have been uh, trying these uh, techniques uh, uh, in our patients, it, though in all these reports, they have considered this technique to be successful in Jude 2 and 3. Uh, and none of them uniformly achieved complete reduction in severely displaced radial neck fracture, that's type 4A and 4B. So we devised <coughs> this technique for uh, Jude 4 and uh, 4A and B, which is actually a combination of the described techniques. And if it is applied in a proper sequence, uh, it can induce a good and anatomical reduction uh, in, in all the children. So this is the technique at glance uh, in an animation form. So what we do, uh, we try to see the radial neck in profile. So under image intensifier on a radiolucent board, we put the forearm in a position where we can see the profile of radial head and the radial head will look a rectangular piece like this. And this is the pre-fractured position uh, where the child has fallen. Now in this position, one has to give varus force. At the same time, your other hand will give longitudinal traction at the wrist. 
give a little bit pressure through thumb and it will convert a jude type 4 to type 3 and then you keep a constant pressure on the radial head and flex and pronate simultaneously the forearm and this will uh, tighten the ligamentous structure and it will reduce the fracture i will play it again for you and again so first step is to look at the radial head in profile so that may come in a bit of uh, supination more than mid prone and once you see the radial head in profile that is the position in which you will give longitudinal traction and a varus force so by giving varus force you are decompressing the lateral recess and longitudinal traction you will see the disimpaction and this is a pre-fractured position and once you push the radial head it will reduce like a disc in a computer and then by doing this terminal flexion pronation maneuver which is a key element of this technique you will see the radial head aligns uh, 100% and once it aligns uh, it remains stable in pronation and you can check your reduction both in flexion extension and full range of uh, uh, flexion extension in the lateral profile. Uh, and what we have found that the fracture was stable and we did not put a K-wire or metazoo uh, in this uh, fractures in any of them. And we kept the plaster in mid prone and 90 degree flexion. And uh, the plaster was continued for three weeks. And after three weeks, the range of motion was started. And all this patient received full range of motion at the end. So what is the biomechanical basis of this technique? Uh, the capsular ligament uh, and lateral collateral ligaments, that is lateral ulnar collateral ligament and radial collateral ligament, they play a very important role in stability of uh, uh, the reduced radial head. Uh, we know that when you supinate the forearm, these ligaments along with the annular ligament, they become lax and it allows the radial head to translate laterally uh, and in posteriorly. The moment uh, you pronate the annular ligament as well as the collateral ligaments become tight and it obliterates the lateral recess and with the flexion uh, it obliterates the posterior recess so this uh, uh, radial head uh, translation will be avoided and uh, the radial head would sit in so if you keep the forearm in mid prone or a little bit more pronation you will see that through the range of motion the radial head doesn't move and uh, that the Ligament to Texas uh, is very important and so that we need the ligaments to be intact. Now, many uh, friends and colleagues, they send me uh, x-rays uh, with elbow dislocation and radial neck fracture and they said, we applied your technique, it did work. So when elbow gets dislocated, this these ligaments might get torn or disrupted and so this technique may not work 100% because you need uh, 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 intact ligament. Uh, we know that Jeffrey described two types of um, radial neck fractures. The first one is the one with the lateral impact where the ligaments are considered to be intact. There this uh, technique works. The type Jeffrey two type fractures, which is a social elbow dislocation. Although we have found some success with this technique, many times you may not be able to achieve it. So it is very critical to find out what sort of injury uh, it is. It's, it's an isolated injury or it's an uh, associated with elbow dislocation. Let me show you again, uh, the traction uh, is applied with elbow extension and a pre-fractured position in a profile of radial neck. The second step is varus force and, and uh, uh, with the pressure over the radial head. Now, some people do mistake that they they are not able to locate the, the radial head and uh, uh, they, they may put their thumb either, uh, either anteriorly or posteriorly and not right on the radial head. That happens mainly on the hefty children. So take some time and locate the radial head properly. You may like to take images to see where your thumb is and where the radial head is. So you, it is prerequisite you should, your pressure should be on directly on the radial head and then uh, the next step is to you flex and pronate simultaneously with a partially reduced radial head and give plaster in mid prone position with 90 degree flexion. Radiologic correlation, if we see uh, in AP view, you see the maximum uh, 
radial head angulation in a profile as this. And then once you give varus and traction, you can reduce a type four to type three like this. And then once you flex and pronate, you can reduce this fracture completely, as you can see. A final follow-up of the same child, uh, at one year follow-up, the radial head reduced without any evidence of AVN, and there is full range of motion. So that was a Jude type 3A. And let's see, this is Jude type uh, 4B, where it is completely toppled off and it's lying on the side, and we could reduce it uh, fully anatomically without uh, uh, any instrumentation or K wire or metazoo. Now, this girl was referred to me uh, with a very uh, benign looking x ray. And uh, the surgeon tried uh, this technique and he said that he failed to reduce, and the patient was referred to me. And uh, the moment I tend to check, the child had a global swelling along the elbow. When we see an isolated radial neck fracture, the patient could have a tender point along the lateral border and there will be minimal swelling. But when it is associated with elbow dislocation, there will be global swelling and global tender point. So in this child, we saw the radial neck in profile. It was a Jude type 4A. And uh, the moment I extended the elbow, I, I could see that elbow is getting dislocated. So this was the one elbow dislocation associated with uh, radial neck. So one has to be very careful. Sometimes the elbow spontaneously reduces in the flexion and uh, you may not uh, foresee that this would be a dislocated elbow. So what, what happens uh, the moment you extend it, you see the elbow gets and here, although we tried, uh, we could not achieve 100% reduction and, and we resorted to uh, open reduction. Um, and we could achieve a full anatomic reduction, we placed a temporary K wire and it did well. So, as I mentioned before, fracture of the neck radius in children um, associated with a temporary posterior dislocation or the ones which are iatrogenic dislocations, they have, uh, there is a fair chance that this technique may not work. So, one more friend referred this uh, case to me is a completely toppled off uh, radial head. The articular surface is more uh, looking away from the articular cartilage. And uh, this is how it was looking on X-ray. So there was a paper uh, recently published that how to reduce a Jeffrey type two. So here you can extend the elbow and, and actually you have to re-dislocate. And once you do uh, re-dislocation, the there is a space for radial head to go back and you push on the radial head from behind and many a times it reduces by itself sometimes you might need to use a forcep or uh, some a wire to joystick so same way uh, it was done and uh, you can see the radial head set in again and then we apply our technique we placed it in pronation and flexion and the head was completely stable uh, and the surgeon decided to treat conservatively for three weeks and child did thereafter good. So uh, this is the technique. Now this paper has been published in Indian Journal of Orthopedics with the video of this animation technique. And I have some uh, live reduction maneuver videos with me if you wish me to share sometimes. But uh, once you read this paper, you will realize that uh, there's a pure ligament or texas we use. And so uh, intrafocal pinning or metazoo technique for radial neck fractures uh, is we have not used in last five years in any of our radial neck fractures. We could, uh, we could reduce them by close means, uh, all the radial neck fracture most severely displaced. The ones where, where it was associated with dislocation, we might have to uh, add some stability. Uh, thank you very much, James. I hope uh, uh, you will be able to apply this technique in your patients. One uh, suggestion which I give to all my fellows and my colleagues is uh, have faith in this technique. When you are um, applying this technique for the first time, you may not uh, find success in one or two goals. So keep, uh, keep on trying for 
three, four times, and you will see that gradually radial head is coming in its position. And uh, with this flexion pronation maneuver, you will be able to reduce it completely. So uh, we have done in all the cases, and it's not difficult. So if you come across one, try it for some time, three, four times, and I'm sure you will, uh, you will be successful and you will be happy and zilled to see that how nicely you can reduce it anatomically. Thank you very much. Thanks for your time.